I'm here as a professional, but also as a family caregiver. I'm Nicole Drowick, Senior Director of Public Policy for the ARC, but I'm sitting here with my brother, Chris, who receives Medicaid home and community-based care, my mom, who coordinates that care, but also coordinates the care of her parents, uh, which got more complex with my grandmother's recent Parkinson's diagnosis. So many families are families like ours, realizing often only when they need the services the most that Medicare doesn't cover long-term services for aging family members and that waiting lists are years long for them and for people with disabilities who need Medicaid home and community-based services. And even when families are lucky like ours to get pulled off of the list, getting and keeping direct support workers and home care workers is difficult because the pay is so low much too low for the work they do, they do, especially because it is life-giving work. It is harrowing to fill in gaps in the system to keep family members safe at home and avoid financial ruin for family caregivers. <laughs> oh. <I'm sorry. laughs> the polling continues to be strong for the investments in home and community-based care for our seniors like my grandma, people with disabilities like Chris here, for family caregivers like my mom, and for pay the paid workforce. In Chris's words, these services matter because it is a lifeline to people like me. We must make sure it is available to anybody who needs it, and we must support the workers who do the work. Our family is thrilled with President Biden's plan to include these investments for access to home and community-based care and for better pay for the workers in the Build Back Better agenda. My question is, what can people, members of the disability community like Chris and our family expect to see from the administration through the Build Pack Better agenda in this space. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Mom, for being here today. I'm going to take first shot at this and then hand it over to the Vice President. There is so much that we can do, Nicole. There's so much we can do to better support people with disabilities. And I know this remains a top priority for the Biden-Harris administration. One way that we can do this is what you've already talked about and, that, and something that I've been pushing for very hard is investing in home and community-based services, HCBS. Strengthening HCBS is a pillar of the president's Build Back Better agenda, and that's why I was proud to help secure $12 billion in funding for HCBS in the American Rescue Plan, which Democrats passed. And that's why I also led an effort in support for fulfilling President Biden and Vice President Harris's request of $400 billion to expand and improve Medicaid HCBS funding in this budget package. We have an opportunity now to invest in HCBS through the Build Back Better budget, and I'll continue working with my colleagues to get it done. Madam Vice President. That's great. Uh, so everybody probably knows, but HCBS is the Medicaid Home and Community-Based Services Program. And at the heart of it, um, the point is, and, and this is why Build Back Better is gonna put more resources into that, is that we should allow people with disabilities to fully participate in society. <laughs> yes. That should be the goal, um, our collective goal. And then the question becomes, well, how do you reach that goal? Well, part of it is families need support and literally financial support to do things like um, home upgrades, right? to have personal aids so that folks can receive the support they need. And it, it ranges you know, on the scale of support and care, right? Sometimes it's a little bit of one, sometimes it's more of the other. Uh, but families need help doing that. And it should be our collective interest in supporting that, that approach because it's just simply the right thing to do. And so again, I wanna thank you all for your courage to tell your story. It's great to see all three of you. I know you are a multi-generational family and there's so much that is great about that. It's, it, it, it is wonderful to have, but it does require a lot of work, especially for the generation that's in the middle of those multi-generations. And um, so we appreciate all that you all are doing and thank you. And we're gonna keep fighting for you. We gotta build back better.